Hey everybody, this is the LEGO Arctic Mobile Exploration Base set. They put it in the city theme, just to put it somewhere, rather than giving it its own top-level theme. This is one of the big ones for this sub-theme for this year, and let's get right into it, looking at the individual components or sub-assemblies one at a time. Now, they call the entire set a mobile base. However, honestly, this here is the base. This is the base that can be made mobile by just dragging it along. It's on skids, those are in dark blue, and it can just be towed along. It has a tow bar here with a tow ball at one end. You can also attach things to the back of it with a tow hitch here. You've got a large door to get access to this for minifigures to step up there. You've got a couple spots to hold on to some accessories, and you can also open up the top of this as a human huge figure to get easier access inside. I like how these edges are kind of angled in, but uh, yeah, access honestly isn't all that great. So you've got kind of a bunk bed back here. It's just raised up. That's a spot for one single figure at a time to take a little bit of, uh, get a little bit of R&R, &R, get a little bit of, of sleep back there. We've got a coffee machine back here, and that's just the lab table there with some instrumentation to take some readings off of a sample that you find in the field. Other than that, got a computer screen here. I'm assuming it's a touch screen, touch screen setup because it does not have a, uh, a keyboard to go with it. And really that's just it for the base part. You got a transceiver dish up here that can rotate around. I think this thing looks very nice. I like how it's built, it's simple. But uh, we need to look at some more stuff, because this isn't enough. Now this thing here is kind of like a, a tractor cab unit. It is really used to pull along the mobile base sled, and it can pull other things as well. It can kind of be the, the front power unit for a road train to use in uh, uh, frozen situations in, in frozen terrain. Very large tires that are actually semi-pneumatic. You can squeeze those. It's not quite as large as I thought it was going to be, just relative to a minifig. You know, I thought I was going to kind of tower over them, but it doesn't. But I really like the look of it. I like the way that they attached this rear window unit, you know, which has a bunch of windows kind of fused together, just two pieces, the outer piece and the, the glass piece. It's the same piece that's used here and you also saw it on the mobile base but it's just attached on its side it's actually just kind of clamped in place got a nice little bit of access for minifigures to get up there although there isn't a door for them to open here unfortunately it's got a whole crane on the back which you can do stuff with uh, it's got a, a geared uh, worm gear gear box there which is clear and you can just turn that from the side and it moves fairly quickly has the hook at the end of it there is no uh, no string involved in this. You can extend this out just a little bit, but that's that's about it. That's about as far as you can extend it. Uh, the lift arm in the center is not as long as it ought to be. Of course, this can be rotated around. It's just on a, a ratcheted joint at the base, which is good. Gives it some stability. Again, you have a tow bar uh, ball back here, ball style, so it can attach to anything that has the the hitch, you know, to to grab that. And on the inside of this, let me just uh, pull up the top. It actually goes forward like so. You have space for a couple of figures. So one is going to be the driver facing towards the front. Does not have any console in front of him, but he does have some instrumentation up here on the side. Same thing on the other side. It's got space for a coffee mug. Very important. It's a Lego City set. That's good. And in the back you get the crane operator's seat. Uh, and that person has a console in front of them and a couple of, of uh, uh, levers, control levers to do the necessary functions. And that's about that. Once again, I like the shaping inside of here. You know, the fact that it's not just a rectangle that actually helps to hold things together, but it just looks nice. And yeah, that's about it for this one. Let's move on again. Now, this is a pretty massive mobile circular saw. It has an extendable articulating arm that can move forward and it gives you pretty much just the, the range of motion that you want. You can bring it up, you can bring it down. It's articulated top and bottom. They've got these little gears on the sides to allow you to spin up the blade. I believe this is a brand new blade for this year. It actually has a 
axle hole connection in it so it's able to hook directly up to an axle and allow you to turn it there is no turret here to to rotate the the top of it around it's actually pretty low slung where the the operator's cabin is it's a little bit weird that there's this gap here I wish that had been filled up with an inverted slope has a handful of stickers on it. You saw a couple up on the arm and then some back here on the back. I don't think it needed all those stickers. If you want to leave some off, just feel free to. I like the shaping of this overall though. Uh, it definitely has good play value. It does what it needs to do. It looks cool. It looks like it'll be fun. Again, it has the tow bar and you can easily just pull these off if it annoys you that it's sticking out all the time. That probably looks a little bit better, but yeah, you can also just fold it up when it's not in use and it has the receptacle at the front so that you can put it into a line of trailers and things to be towed. So just bring the, the blade in, bring the arm down nice and close and you can just put it right in line and the operator just gets a steering wheel in the front and I think that's fine. The final sled build is basically the Arctic road train equivalent of a plain flatbed trailer. This looks very simple because it's supposed to be. It's just supposed to be a place to put stuff so you can carry little bits of cargo. They give you two of these. I think this one can be centered up at the front. Each of these is just two pieces, you know, one on top, one on the base, and each of these has within it just a pair of snowshoes. They don't give you any other cargo or anything else to really find but you can always find stuff to put in there you can put this harness in there a little adapter to go with the crane i'll show you better how this works in some different ways but it'll fit very nicely right there at the front there's a motorcycle as you can put in there i'll show you that up more closely in a minute as well and finally you can set this up with a, a frozen woolly mammoth that you may may or may not have discovered as part of this entire expedition so that can just be placed there works a little bit better when the harness is not attached at the front you can bring the head down a little bit more or you can also just turn the whole thing around obviously i need to show you this as well so since i've gotten through all the vehicle related stuff except for the motorcycle let's get to this now How about like right now this is brand new for 2018 it is uh, it's kind of funny looking. I don't know if the tusks are a little bit too long. Uh, I don't know if the head shape is right, but I don't know. I think it's I think it's fine. Uh, it would have been nice to get a little bit of articulation to the legs, at least a pair. But the head goes up, head goes down, rotates side to side. You can adjust the angles of these tusks a little bit if you want. Bring them out. And then the trunk can be rotated around just a little bit. And that's just that. It looks cool, but uh, it's not that great in my opinion. I don't know. It's okay. So a major premise of this entire set is that these Arctic explorers would come upon a surprise in the form of a nearly perfectly preserved woolly mammoth beneath the ice or in an ice outcropping that is kind of come up from from be, from beneath just due to natural processes and you would need to bring a saw in something like this something big and powerful and start breaking it out of course you probably in real life want to be a little bit more careful than this but the idea is that you would go up to it and start you know just tearing this up this has panels on either side they're identical you just break them off and then you get access to the woolly mammoth itself. Now the way you would pull this up is by using the crane on the back. Let me get some of this ice out of the way. On the back of the kind of tractor rig, you know, tractor cab unit, use that adapter that I showed you a minute ago, the harness piece. Hook that up with your, your hook right there. And just kind of bring this around to the side. Bring this down, it has to be lined up just right. I think you want to go up towards the front to get the balance right. And you kind of just bring these bars down around the side to suggest that it's well held. And up you go. <laughs> there it is. Lifts it up so the center of gravity is right there where it needs to be. You can rotate this around and uh, you know have some other folks bring this sled up and 
place place your haul onto it and then tow it away when you're all done. Alternately, you could use this side build without the woolly mammoth in it as just an ice cave and make up your own stories, make up your own small builds, put people in there, use it as a temporary shelter. I think it looks nice just by itself. Uh, the play value is okay. It's, it's not great, but it does work. But I, I just like how this thing looks when it's all put together. Those pieces on the sides look nice. The uh, transparent color is transparent light blue, so it's kind of cyan, not transmedium blue. And it's cool. It's effective and it's kind of pretty. This bike uses as many pre-existing pieces as reasonably possible with the motocross style fairing part, fairing and rear body, and then an existing uh, ski or alternately snowshoe piece towards the front and they just have some small linkages that you put together yourself to create the, the track back here you can rotate that it's it's all just free-flowing there is no wheel in here or anything there's no gear so it just uses a little bit of, of friction it doesn't really work that well on hard surfaces works just fine on low pile carpeting and the person just holds on to the handlebar you have that one single bar attachment at the front can hold anything with or can accommodate anything with a clip and that's just that i think it looks good this actually could have used a sticker or two I'm surprised they didn't have any to add to it the set comes with an assortment of figures with a nice color scheme the main color the lighter blue is dark azure it's one of the newer colors in the lego palette goes well against the uh, the little bits of white and also a fair amount of dark blue. A little bit different contrast you get with the center one with the dark orange color there. The torsos on the left and right are the same, so I'm not going to move the jackhammer out of the way, but let's take a look at those on the backs. And also, when it comes to faces, unfortunately, you do not get any alternate faces here, but I did want you to see more clearly the actual faces that are shown in the, the default view and these are just showing you some more of the accessories that are available to use with figures and here are the rest of them so once again the torsos of the figures on the left and right are the same the one in the middle is different a nice mold for the hat for the guy over there on the right very crisp colors thanks to dual molding for that yeah i really really like the the white as a trim against that dark azure. Those go together really, really well. I'd like to see those colors used more in the future, possibly even in, in large amounts for an entire you know, unique theme. And I need to see just the remainders of these faces just to close everything out. And that truly is it. Just six minifigures in the set in total. When you hook everything together, it looks something like this. And like I said, it's, it's just a road train. So you've got that really heavy tractor unit at the front and it just pulls everything along. Uh, when you're setting things up like this with everything connected and with the woolly mammoth on the trailer, they don't give you good places for either of these and the motorcycle is kind of on its own. It has to do its own thing, it has to be you know, ridden along by itself, but I, I think that's that's okay. You can always put these boxes up on the roof here or put the motorcycle inside of that and figure out a way to make it work. But yeah, I think that's that's cool. It would be cool to see other options and other ideas for connecting things to this, you know, to expand the system, especially more structures. I, I wish that there was more of this type of stuff in this set. The the, the saw works well. The trailer does its job. It kind of needs to exist. This looks cool and works just fine as well. Uh, motorcycle, not so much. I think it looks cool. Does not work so well, especially not on hard surfaces. The mammoth looks cool at first, but I wish that it did more. You know, had a little bit more posability. And that pretty much sums up my thoughts about this set. Oh yeah, this is a surprise win. I, I like this way more than I thought. I thought it was going to be just a kind of throwaway, uh, you know, terrain, terrain piece out of necessity because they need some terrain, but it looks nice enough and gives you enough structure that I think it's good to reuse for other stuff. Or at the very least, just to use to represent an iceberg off in the background or, you know, just an ice outcropping or something just for the looks, just to kind of set the scene. 
So that basically leaves just the issue of value to talk about. And in the US, $120 for 786 pieces. Looks bad on paper in terms of just the numbers. Now, the set does have a fair number of pretty large pieces, so I would not expect it to have anywhere near a 10 cent price to part ratio. I would expect to see something in the 12 cent range, I think would be about appropriate. Uh, in terms of the overall volume of stuff that you get and the amount of play value that you get here, I feel like it's a little bit lacking. I wish there was more little stuff to do. More stuff to do around structures or, you know, if this had an entire pull-out kind of, uh, or maybe if it could open up and then uh, some things could fold up to give you additional consoles, some additional instruments to look at, you know, more food for really the explorative play and investigating clues as you search for you know something that that has been preserved something organic you know you find little tufts you find that that bone you find little tufts of uh of fur you know and uh, you, you search for it i think that would be good also just to have things just for kids to to have more more fine play with would be good uh, there's a lot of large stuff here which works well on its own but I feel like this is lacking detail not in terms of looks I think all the looks of things are detailed enough more than enough but to actually play with you know small accessories and uh, maybe more tools and stuff to allow the figures to really do more I think that would have brought in possibly enough value to make this worth it in my opinion it's a big enough box I feel like there's enough mass of stuff here mass of pieces to make it work for that price just enough figures but not enough little stuff to really make it a 120 dollars value of playset in my opinion but that's just my opinion so feel free to share yours in the comments down below and i'm going to get to work on the next video hope that i showed you everything you wanted to see here and i'll catch you later thanks for watching